Uh, the central region will start off with that. It's quite interesting. Um, it's interesting to note that the NDC, since 1992, has always filled that somebody from the central region, either as a running mate or as a candidate. And interesting, so I noticed that out of the many times that you've done this, uh, five out of the times that they went with a vice president running mate, they won three out of it. Does yeah. that spell a good sign for Gene this time? <laughs> well, guys, welcome to the show. I'll take your initial thoughts, Martin. What do you make of, uh, generally, these two swing states? Yeah, so I would uh, start by saying that, and it's a statement I have said a few times, that the central region and the NDC have had a relationship since 92. However, the region has not done good by the NDC, although the NDC is heavily reliant and dependent on them for their electoral fortunes, they really do not seem to care if, we, if you choose a candidate from our region or not. However, as time goes on, there seem to be some understanding between the political party, the NDC, and the central region as um, you know, uh, one of the key swing regions. And today we'll be discussing it in detail to find out what the underlying factors mm. are and what the constituents look out for. Because you recall that when Ko Ekensenaka was the first vice presidential candidate chosen from that region for Jerry John Rawlings, mm. Because then, where we had just started the democratic process, the NDC won by a vast margin. We cannot say that it, it, a court case and a court selection helped in that. I think the major factor everybody would agree to was Chairman Rawlings. Mm. However, since then, the party has stuck with picking someone, including even a presidential candidate, um, the likes of... Um, John Evans at Tamil's prof, yeah. the late, was from there as presidential candidate. He lost twice and was only successful in the third time. And between those periods when he lost those years, so in 2008 and uh, in 2004 and in 2008, you can tell that the central regional margins that they voted for the NDC mm. was nothing really to write home about, which didn't even propel Professor uh, Mills to become the president of the day. So all of these dynamics underlie why the party themselves would want to uh, maybe realign their relationship or reassess their relationship with the region in terms of who they select from that, 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 that place. The MPP, on the other hand, has had somewhat of a, uh, um, you know, a good cop, bad cop kind of relationship with the central region because their focus, the NPP's focus, is on two key regions. And if you look at the dynamics that go into selecting a, a, a candidate, whether presidential candidate or the running mate, the MPP hardly, in fact, has not considered the central region at all. Mm. But they want to have a north-south divide or someone who can satisfy these dynamics. Which they have been consistent with over the period. Very consistent with, you know, over the period. And it looks as though going into 2024, a number of things that have happened since 2016 when NDC has, MPP has been in power is likely to tell hmm. on why the region would or would not vote for the NPP. And so it's good that we have uh, Mr. Ebenezer Nimakonyako with us. He'll walk us through the numbers hmm. and then we'll also speak to our correspondent on the ground who has gauged the mood and the thoughts of the constituents in the central region to give us what they make of the key issues that will uh, influence or decide, help them decide who yeah. they vote for. It's interesting you mentioned Aka over there. Interestingly, uh, in, 20, in 1996, I gather he ran against Chairman Rollins and lost. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Quite so interesting after, one there. So it isn't the central region effect automatically, from what all. you said yes, yes. earlier there about the Chairman Rollins effect. Uh, thank you very much, Evan. uh, Evans. Evans, I'm almost missing your name. Uh, so your initial thoughts, what do you make of all of the central region, especially in focus? Yes, yeah, so I think, uh, first of all, let us give our viewers a perspective of what we mean when you say a region of constituency is a swing region mm. or a swing constituency. Mostly it comes in with about three or four characteristics. One, it means that the parties have virtually an evenly divided uh, support on the ground. Mm. The second characteristic is that the, their performance are always very close. And then the, because of that, the margins are small. Uh, swing regions or constituencies are also termed as what we call battleground uh, uh, constituencies or regions. Mm. And then finally, their voting patterns are unpredictable. Nobody can predict their outcomes from the beginning of the contest. Isn't that questionable considering the fact that we know that every four years, every eight years, the central region swings to opposition? Yeah, so that is the pattern in Ghana. Uh -huh. But you still don't know uh, how 
the final outcome will be. Okay. So for example, Greater Accra has been a swing region, mm. but in 2020, I mean, they went uh, against their expected predicted outcome. And so swing regions are, or constituencies are uh, regions and constituencies whereby, I mean, the, the, the outcomes of both elections for the two parties are very close and they hold the key mm. in deciding who wins or becomes the president of the, of the country. So this is a general characteristic of what we mean by a region or a constituency being a swing uh, a, a region or constituency. Okay. Right. But looking at the patterns, do you usually see the outcomes also reflect the same in terms of the, uh, the percentage in the wins, for instance, like, judging from the central region conversation that you just... Yeah, so sometimes it is in Ghana for now, we have virtually uh, a two-cycle a two-term cycle, uh, let's say, voting pattern when it comes to the central and greater Accra. So greater Accra and central, they have always had this two-term cycle for the president. And so you realize that irrespective of sometimes either the, the president or the vice president coming in from central region, mm -hmm. it, has not, it has not had that effect on how they vote. Mm. The outcomes have always been the two term for the government in power. And so, for example, uh, Nana Jane uh, Mensah yeah. was uh, the running mate in 2020. Yeah. And it didn't have that much effect on the outcome of the voting pattern in the central region. OK, so you walk us through the numbers. I, your screen is active over there. Yes, yeah, so uh, you look at this is how the national pattern is mm. and you realize that in in 2020 our registered voters I mean nationwide we had 17 million and then you had a uh, valid vote cast uh, was 13.2 million the turnout nationally I mean it was very high mm. in 2020 that was a 79.47 uh, and then the margin between the NPP and the NDC in the 2020 election was uh, a, a wholesome amount, 510,000 uh, votes. Which is about half the previous year's uh, margins, the previous election year's margin, about yeah. a million. Yes. Okay. I mean, what happened is that, I mean, 2016 was uh, an overperformance year for the NPP. Mm. And so uh, as we go along the uh, year's elections here, there's going to be the correction of that 2016 well, realignment, uh, realignment of the 2016. <laughs> and, and it's also instructive to note that these figures are the national figures, mm. national figures of the number of people who registered, the number of people who actually turned out to vote, and then the voter percentage. And all of these are below, especially the voter turnout and then the margin, below the 2016 figure. Because in 2016, the voter turnout and the margin that the MPP won by yeah. was quite huge. In fact, over almost a million or over mm -hmm. uh, margin between the NDC and the MPP. But like he's saying, as time goes on, in 2020, we saw that a number of the constituencies, especially that voted for MPP because there was this wind of change that was blowing across the country. A number of them reverted or reset and went back to the NDC. That's how come the MPP lost its majority in parliament by quite a wholesome all over 40 or so seats. Mm. So let's now, uh, like you indicated, go to some of the specific dynamics. And today our concentration is on central region. We'll do those dynamics, then come to the greater Accra region and look at 2020, especially why the 2020 seemed to have differed of slightly hmm. from being called a swing region. It still remains a swing region, I'm sure. Sure. All right. So this, this, is the, this is the voting pattern the pool. Yes, from the year 2000. So you can see that the NPP won nationally in uh, 2002-04, and in the first round of 2008, they won. OK. Then the second round, the NDC uh, uh, took over. And then NDC improved their performance in 2012, mm. won uh, handsomely. And then in 2016, Nanado's message of hope uh, came in, and then they won by one of their largest margins. Mm. I mean, 53.59. Uh, 
the NPP has never had that ratio mm. in the Fourth Republic, except for Nanado in 2016. Right. So you can see the support that Nanado enjoyed in 2016. It was massive. Mm. For you to get 53%, close to 54 I mean, it is unheard of in the, 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 the Fourth uh, Republic, except for 1992 when uh, Rollins, huh? the MPP boycotted uh, part of the elections. Okay. But from the year 2000, where we will say that elections have been very competitive, I mean, Anando uh, showing in 2016 was uh, outstanding astronomical. And, and again, it's interesting if you look very closely at how this line graph looks like. Anytime the NPP has won, they have gone past 51, hmm. at least 51. So, say, th so in 2008, that was the second term of John Ajikum Kufo. So, comparatively, you can say people started either losing trust in, in him or the usual something apathy, changed. Incumbent apathy. Again, and in 2008, that's when Professor John Evans Atamils became president of the republic. Yeah. And this is a national poll we are looking at, or how Ghanaians turned out to vote. And in 2008, although the NDC won the national elections, mm. the NPP actually won... Um, okay, so this is not a central region. Yeah. And then it, it looks as though that although the NDC uh, won, their margin nationally was still quite... Uh, it didn't cross. The NPP did better in 2008 than the uh, NPP. Especially in the, the in the first round. In the, in the first, first round. round. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, gentlemen, let's take a let's go deeper now into central region proper and okay. understand how the region uh, fared 2020. What's the trend? What are the trends looking like? And uh, how much of a big deal is this uh, swing region? So we he's going to start from the central region, mm. and again we are looking at this region based on the fact that it has stayed consistent like he indicated with its character mm. of being a swing region irrespective of whatever dynamics or promises you make them they have a certain mindset of their own and they will later dig into specific constituencies in the region but you see well. it'll be interesting to know the dynamics of the, uh, the central region because Accra is very metropolitan cosmopolitan mm. filled with different people Accra is almost nobody's land in quote yeah. because you find a, a very diverse uh, couple group of, of people, people here central region doesn't entirely mimic that does it? Yeah, so this is the, the, the graph of central region. Mm. So the other time I said that central region is the only region with a 100% record okay. of electing the president. Mm. So you look at the graph of central region yeah. and it follows exactly the national graph. Mm. There is no distinction. Mm. If you are winning in central, you are winning the national uh, presidency. That is how they vote. And so they have a 100% record of electing who becomes the president. You look at 2016, 2020, it went for uh, the NPP. And NPP, they are in power. Mm. Uh, 2208, uh, you realize that uh, they... NPC was in power at that time. Right? Yes. In 2012, it went for uh, John uh, uh, Professor uh, Mills. Mills, yeah. So they are national... Who's from the region, by the way? Yes. Their voting pattern mimics exactly the national. Mm. And when we come to actually within the region, there are a lot of swing constituencies. In fact, <laughs> uh, central region is the only region yeah. with the highest number of swing constituencies within that region. Which also mimic it equally. The exactly. National polls. So the central region has become more or less a reflection of everything Ghanaian. Wow. Mm. You get it mm. because you have part of the region that are fishermen. You have a very relatively educated uh, populace, voting populace. Mm. And so they and Greater Accra, they virtually vote in tandem. The only departure was in uh, 2020. Mm. So this is how Central Region has performed over the years. And I said they are very good predictors mm. of who become a uh, uh, the, the president. Interesting. Martin, uh, yeah. you know the central region is also uh, an, an education hub. I gather that is why Free SHS did a lot of work over there for them and got their buy-in. And of course, with the economic uh, impact that has in the region. I don't know what you also think may have worked in 2020 to have, uh, 2016 to have gotten their buy-in still maintained into 2020. Then again, taking off from where, um, you know, uh, Eben left off, the interesting coincidence is that 
I think, like he's indicating, they just have a mind of their own. Mm. See, so the entire country can decide to go in a certain direction, but the central region stays true to itself. They can decide, and consistently they've decided to give whichever government is in power a two-term, and then they change their minds again. Mm. And we said that, first of all, they are one of their own, which is Professor uh, John Vasatamos contested in the 2000 elections, in 2004 elections, but did not get the nod of the region people. If you look at 2008, when uh, John Evans Mills won the first time, even look at that, it was quite marginal. It didn't go past, you know, the, I mean, it was really close. 47.12 mm. for the MPP, 49 yeah. for the NDC. Before 2012, when uh, the sympathy votes across the country for the NDC helped John, uh, John Dramani Mahama become president of the day. Even then, you can tell that the margin that John Jekum Kufu got in 2004 was even higher than NDC winning, although um, the, the late vice president, uh, who was also from the uh, central region, yeah. was a key candidate for them. Then they changed their minds again in 2016. And it tells you that the pattern with which they have voted has stayed consistent. And the underlying factors will definitely will get our correspondent who is also on the ground to help us have an understanding of what exactly the people think and why they vote the way they vote. Interesting. You see, the Central Region is also an education hub. So let's, let's just on a lighter note say that maybe they are very educated elites who know what they want and don't just go with the flow. But yeah. uh, interestingly, uh, free SHS was a big deal there, like we mentioned earlier, uh, especially because, you know, they have a significant number of secondary schools in there. Uh, I hear the residents were very excited about taking the opportunity. The Many people who, for instance, couldn't have afforded to go to secondary school took advantage of that. And you know, we I think we don't even talk enough about the impact, uh, the economic side of free SHS because you know, a lot of people, even landlords who, uh, a lot of people couldn't get uh, hostels, or sorry, dormitories, accommodation. accommodation issues, were renting within these communities. And yeah. you know how interesting when students appear in a community, suddenly rent goes up. Yes. That's yes. an interesting yes. dynamics over there. And beyond that, there's also the issue of the promise uh, that was made to them about an airport and a harbor. Maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll look at that going mm. into 2024. Yeah. But that particular promise has become an albatross around the neck of Very Dr. Mahmoud Baumi. But I'm sure it played a role, <laughs> at least to the lead up to the elections. <laughs> yes. And now that they've come to say, well, he said it, mm. but it's not likely that we will give you an airport and a harbor. Mm. Maybe that issue can be let go for now. Definitely, it would. It okay. will still be on the minds of some people who probably started looking at how mm. they can take advantage of these kinds of political promises. Okay. And political parties need to be more cautious of what they say when they go to the ground because mm. it could turn around, like you indicated, yeah. the free senior high school policy, people within the western, re the central region, because mm. of the uh, senior high schools in there, they have about three or four key senior high schools in the central region, they saw uh, an economic boom. Yeah. If you have more people coming in, People will put up structures to house them. Markets will open up. It actually opens up the entire region. Mm. So it was a promise that they hooked their expectations on. And now that the government of the day won and have implemented it, some would be, depending on where you stand, that those who say it's successful, it's still struggling. However, they saw a potential boom for their economy and for their, uh, their own lives. And Many can say that that actually influenced their decision to vote for the NPP. I know a, a, a significant number of those who would benefit from the free SHS by the end of the cycle would be uh, ready to vote because this majority year. of them would have reached yes. that age and this be. Year. And, and, and you know, interestingly, too, the election period happens whilst they are still in school. So it's most likely a lot of these students will register within their school area and campus. vote there. Yeah. And of course, it, it, their bias will be obvious. But Martin, walk us through. <laughs> what would be the key considerations for voters in the central region? So we know that um, beyond education, they also have a number of factories that has become a political football. Key amongst them will be the uh, Commander mm. Sugar Factory. The same place the president made some interesting comments? Yes, 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 yes. yes. So it, it's, uh, it's also instructive to know that the some people within the region uh, in last few surveys that we have observed say that job opportunities is a major contributory factor to what they would inform which way they vote. So job opportunities, topical for them. Promises that have been made that they believe have failed or have not been fully implemented would we'll touch on the Commander Sugar Factory again. The promise of an airport, the promise of a fishing harbor, these two actually were made by the 
current administration. Mm. The Commander Sugar Factory, NDC, over the years have said that they promised they were going to re re resurrect the sugar factory. They actually did, based on what they, the NDC or the government of the day, analyzed, they had set it in motion. Mm. They bought new equipment to get it to start running. They actually got some farmers. They actually started processing sugar. But when there was a change in government, and you know, that's a, another challenge that as a nation we need to look at. One government sets up, uh, gives a promise, actually starts implementing it. They may have a source of funding to mm. keep that particular uh, promise running. Yeah. If another government comes in and they believe that they may not be able to get that reliable source of funding to keep it running, it could truncate and then affect institutions like the Commander Sugar Factory, which currently, as we speak, is struggling. Some say it's been shut down. Government wants to actually sell it off because they believe that it will give them more money to reinvest uh, elsewhere. Uh, not sell it off entirely, at least yeah. a, lo a, a, lease or a long lease of a sort, according to what the, uh, the trade minister said. However, Gao isn't pleased with that move because they think that uh, why not? Why give it to a foreign national and the Ghanaians who can uh, raise the money to run it? You know, so if you are analyzing the swing regions, yeah. you have to analyze Central and Greater Accra together. Together? Because they move in tandem. Okay. Okay. They are both non-aligned. Mm. Historically, they don't have a particular political block that they belong to. So they are free thinkers. Mm. And that makes them the swing, that gives them that swing nature and the characteristics. Mm. Mm. So if you look at Central and Greater Accra, the winning margin or line that you need to win through to become, if you are in opposition, yeah. to become president is a 52% mark. Mm. Okay. If you are okay. not winning, if you go through yeah. the statistics, if you are in a position and you want to become president, yeah. and you are not getting 52% in both Greater Accra and Central, you are not becoming a president. Hmm. Wow. You get it? That's so amazing. in 2020, mm -hmm. you can see that NDC won Greater, Greater Accra. Yeah. But they won it below the 52% mark, which is required. Mm. It's a requirement for you to become president of Ghana. Okay. So you just don't win the swing regions. Mm -hmm. You must win by at least 52%. Mm. That, is the, that is the criteria. Very interesting dynamics there. Exactly. And the reason, one of the reasons why NDC lost Greater Accra and they still maintained power. NPP, you mean? NPP, yeah. sorry, in 2020, mm. was because they have opened up a corridor in the north. Mm. in the northern region and in the northeast. And this helps them, and that helped them to form some sort of a buffer to counteract the laws that they had in Greater Accra. Mm. And so you realize that what uh, run through is the 52 percentage mark. If you are, becoming pre you are in a position where you are becoming president, yeah. you need the 52%. The 52%. Exactly. Interesting. If not, you are not, becoming, you are not coming into power. Okay, you, right. you, you give us more there. But Martin, tell me, what do you think may have accounted for the NDC's win uh, in the Greater Accra region? It's quite interesting yes. because uh, I'm also surprised that Central Region didn't tell the same line as yeah. the Greater Accra region. But what, what are your thoughts? And uh, what we also see from here is that, like you indicated, maybe this could be actually bigger for those at home. There's anybody that has won 52, 52, 52, 52, then 50. Yeah. So they're able to win all right, but they didn't hit the 52% uh, mark that he's referring to. And that is why, although the NDC won greater crowd, they lost the national elections. And there's a good reason why he's saying that there's a certain buffer that, they, that helped the NPP. So ordinarily, the NPP should have lost the national elections. Mm. But although they lost the greater Accra region, they had other regions giving them the support to cross the, the winning line. For the greater Accra region, a number of factors could, could account for it. And some pollsters have indicated the fact that, especially in 2020, there was COVID. Hmm. And the people who had registered, who, who had come into the greater Accra region in the lead up to the elections, uh, there was a lockdown. So it's yeah. not everybody that was able to move out back to their constituencies or regions that they had come in from. So True. people transferred their votes to the greater Accra region, stayed here and voted. So it even changed the number the dynamics, dynamics yeah. in, the in the greater Accra region. And if you look typically at the people who were in the greater Accra region as of the time, they have indicated that they are mostly people from close by regions, like the Volta region. Mm. Most people who had 
who were within Accra at the time of voting in 2020 were from the Volta region. So you can tell that they pushed the NDC's numbers up. However, they were not able to push it further beyond the 52%. But that is one indicator that a number of pollsters have uh, found to be the reason why the NDC was able to win. Because looking at the margins, the NDC, the MPP won the national elections with, that didn't play out, especially in the Volta, in the greater Accra region. That, but some I, people that, in the MPP have argued that, sorry, have argued that the decision to also make the voting day a holiday played a negative impact, uh, had a negative impact on them on election day because they argued that, for instance, uh, Ablikuma Central, that's a, a very... Uh, popular place for the NPP, a lot of the, uh, the Abusoka and Sweppers dealers didn't turn up to where who would have voted ordinarily. Yeah. An interesting dynamic yeah. to look at, but I, I don't know what your thoughts are. And then let's look at how uh, the central region also may mix Accra. The one thing I want to say is that yeah. both central and greater Accra had frustrations with the first term of the NPP administration. Okay. So, but they chose to deal with it differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> greater Accra, uh, vented their frustration on the presidency. Mm. So they voted against the, the president, yeah. okay, and maintained the status quo of their parliamentarians. Mm. Central region did the opposite, the reverse. Okay. What they did was that they, were, they voted for the president, but rather punished the MPP MPs. Mm. So yeah. that is how the two swing regions decided to deal with their frustrations of the first term um, of the Akufado administration. Mm. So you can see that all of them had some sort of frustrations or maybe promises that were not fully fulfilled, but they chose different paths mm. in dealing with their frustration. Central said, we give every president uh, eight years. Why don't we do the same for, for the MPP? Let us rather uh, deal with the uh, MPP MPs. Yeah. Greater Accra said, why not? We are, we are going for the president. Yeah. So you're talking about the Greater Accra region. One very interesting swing constituency is the Adentan constituency. Yeah. Uh, I think it has a penchant of not repeating their uh, candidates twice. Yeah, they don't give anybody... I they think there's been one. Uh, any... Has there been an outlier? None? Since 92, there probably will be one, but then over time, they just don't like allowing anybody to be in parliament for two terms. Let's look at how they've been voting presidentially. And uh, even walk us through that, um, that, those dynamics. So in 2004, what did we see? NDC won. Yeah, so where, that was when the constituency was, 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 was created, was carved out. And they are historically, when it comes to presidential, it's an, it's an NDC constituency when it comes to presidential. Right. Mm. It is more competitive in the parliamentary, just like the Jokuku and other constituencies. So the only time that the NDC won for presidential was in 2016, when Anadu uh, came in. You but MPP? The uh, MPP won, was in 2016. But historically, they are a safe seat uh, for the NDC. And in 2020, I mean, the NDC has a, a, a high chance of, of just uh, winning that, that, uh, that particular constituency. Again. Again, looking at, at, the, at the trajectory uh, hmm. of, of, yeah, of, of and, their and voting like, party. It's a safe region, a safe constituency presidentially yeah. for the NDC. Yeah. But no mess when at, it comes to the parliamentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But even, and even if you look at the numbers with which the NDC has won the yeah. presidential vote, it's so Very when it was created in 2004, yeah. NDC won, but then the margin was below 50. Exactly. That was 49. Mm. 20, 2008, 2012, and 2020, they've had about 53%. Yeah. The only time MPP won in 2016, they couldn't even push beyond 52%. So it tells you that the NDC is quite dominant, irrespective of the win percentage of the NPP, which was in 2016. They couldn't claw as much votes as the NDC has done over the period. So maybe, maybe we can safely save this is anything to go by and it should remain constant. In 2004, the dynamics could look similar to mm. what we've seen over the last few years. All right, uh, gentlemen, we'll have to draw the curtains here. Thank you so much for your time.